My name is Christian. I'm a halfway decent software developer, a more or less successful entrepreneur, mostly less, <laughs> a t-shirt producer, a blogger, and a Zen practitioner. But today, I don't want to speak about any of these things. Today, I would like to let you know why I have traveled to Zagreb. Before I do, I would like to let you know that I'm not getting paid for this trip. I, paid, um, I pay around 350 euro for the flight and taxi myself. I pay for the travel up myself. Um, I had to take a day off. Mm. For full disclosure, this time I got my room and I was promised some free beer. So, all in all, I would calculate the full expense for this trip to around 500 euro, and that all for just 20 minutes on stage. So my challenge for today is to be fully transparent to you. I will tell you all my secrets, and at the end of this talk, you can ask me almost anything which I didn't reveal so far. So this is how I feel. At the moment, I sweat a little bit, my heart beats, and you know, it usually takes me five to 10 minutes to get into my speaker mode where I find my pace and tune. And I promise you, there is nobody in this room who needs a beer more desperately than I do. And I mean, it's not even lunchtime. Yeah, and I am pretty much afraid that you don't like what I have to say, that you don't get anything out of my talk, because that would be very, very, very bad, because everybody would soon know how crappy my talk was. Talking is about giving value. Do I give you enough value? In the moment I speak, I can't know. At webcam, the audience is pretty far away from me. I hardly can see your faces. Instead, I try to listen to your noises. Are you laughing? Snoring? No idea, because my excitement is just too big. My blood rushes through my ears, and I really can't hear you. Talking in public is often like a blind flight. This might be one of the reasons why, though a few people are really talking in public on a regular basis. Yeah. But now I would like to let you know why I have taken the burden of a long travel and staying away from a family just to speak today. Here is five of my reasons, and this is the recent one. When I was a young guy, I was pretty shy. I didn't talk to anybody, and nobody talked to me. I was an outsider. You should not laugh, guys, really. So, that happened to the best of us. Yeah. When I grew a little bit older, another guy asked me if I would like to join his rock band. I was not a musician. The guy simply asked me because I was an outsider, and outsiders are freaking cool to have in rock bands. I said, I said yes, I agreed, and then I bought a drum set. Um, we, we rehearsed a little bit, and then we uh, played a few gigs. The first time I entered the stage, I felt sick, very, very, very sick. But you know, it all went well, because I could hide behind my drum set. That's most likely the only photo for me on stage. After a while, I felt more self-confident. I realized what happens on stage stays on uh, stage. Unless you are Steve Jobs, everybody will forget about your mistakes ne uh, next week. Even today, Steve Jobs' presentations are viewed, commented, and analyzed. But Steve was an extraordinary speaker. It is unlikely that anybody would view my talk next week. This changed my mindset. I was still an introvert outsider, but I could stand up in public and say what I want and what I don't want. Reason two. The preparation for a talk is invaluable. I give only a few talks each year. The reason is not because it costs a lot of money. The reason is because it costs a lot of time and energy to really understand what I am speaking about. After taking the first note for this talk, 
I uh, read a lot of blogs and researched and uh, consulted my psychology books and I spoke to people. You would most likely not do this without an upcoming talk. Now, I understand a lot better. I had a lot of inspiration, of ins uh, inspiration and insight. I even reconsidered my own speaking career. Preparation requires you to focus on the core. You start to look through other people's eyes. You reflect and develop new ideas. This requires a lot of effort. And only a few of us would actually do that without a committed goal like a talk. Reason three. If your talk is valuable, people start recognizing you as an expert in your field. That's nice. Good song. If you want to build up a reputation as a web developer, then there are plenty of possibilities out there. You could write a blog. You could use Twitter. You could create a mailing list. But everybody does that. It is easy to set up WordPress. It is even easy to write tutorials for beginners. But it is a different beast to prove your skills on stage with 500 people watching you. You can edit a blog post until it fits, but on stage you have only one chance to deliver. Last year on WebCamp, I found two experts on Polymer. One is Marcin, who came up on stage without a single slide. He totally blew me away with his competence. And the other guy is Nikos, who, yeah, he, he made me want to become a front-end coder. But that's it. If you, if you want to be an expert like them, you need to stand out of the crowd. You need to stop being ordinary. Instead, you need to become valuable to the community. And the talk is a really great opportunity for that. Reason four. Yeah. I get in touch with great people. When the first time I went to Zagreb, I did not know what to expect. Croatia was an almost unknown culture to me. You know, I ended up sitting out at the venue uh, with a couple of great people drinking sponsored beer, and we made jokes about my home country, Germany, for which, for which I could go to jail. <laughs> that was great. You can't do that in Germany. Uh, when I returned, I have hired another great person, a developer. But speaking goes much farther than fun and business, you know. Um, people respond to what you say in almost real time. Even when you are an expert on a topic, you don't know everything. The audience can give you a total different view on the matter. You just need to fly here, hold a talk, and then you can connect to real people. Each of them having their own set of lives, experiences, and fears, and whatever. And yes, this was an invite to you all to meet me after the talk. But please, not all at once. Just drop by drop, okay? So reason five. It's about trust. When I first announced my, um, when I announced my first talk on my web page, it was not a big thing. I imagine people coming to my web page and uh, seeing everything and saying, hey, there is another primetime developer who gives a talk. Yeah, that's nice. You know, a single talk is just the beginning, and it's a good start, but it's nothing more. When you check my page now, you will see a lot more talks. So far, I have spoken in, of course, Germany, Austria, and Croatia. What do website visitors think now? A regular speaking schedule means you do a good job of speaking, that you know a thing or two about your field of expertise. If you manage to speak at the same conference even two times, that is brilliant, because the conference organizers demonstrate that they trust you. I personally would trust a developer uh, much more when he gives, a regular, uh, when he gives um, regular talks on a specific topic than one I have never heard of. Trust is important if you would like to build up your personal brand, or if you would like to find a new job, or even both. Now, I assume 
you're all working on projects with hands-on. Now, after hearing all that, don't think of speaking as of the center of your career, because it's not. Speaking to developers is just an extension. Your focus should only be on your job and on your expertise. Speaking is about creating value for the audience. If you want to create value for developers, you need to be a developer yourself. Developer evangelists, they are a different story. They can't earn trust with speaking because it's their job. They earn money with traveling and speaking. A regular speaking schedule just means they are doing their job. We can, they can't uh, prove they can code. They can only prove they can talk. We don't know how much expertise an evangelist has just from looking at their schedules. Your expertise is your product. A talk is a great way to show your product. If you show much more than you have, yeah, you know, then you're doing it wrong. Now, this now leads me to the second part of my talk. How did speaking help me? Was I ever paid for a gig? So, no, I never saw, saw money for a gig, especially not here. It's really expensive to go here, but I got a lot back. I would like to tell you a couple of these things. So, the first thing, um, I was giving a talk and some company missed my talk. They called me and said, hey, could you help us a little bit? And I got a consultation gig with them. The other thing was a company looked at my talk list and they checked out my blog and they were offering me a, a long-term contract. And I was, say, yeah, I was saying, yes, and we are still working together. Then. I held a talk on the Apache Software Foundation where I am involved with. So in my region, I am now the guy to contact if there is a question open source or the Apache Software Foundation in general. So this got me a lot of business leads. You know, these people who make the business and make the decisions come to me and ask me something. That's always great to have. And when I was in Austria to give a talk, uh, there was a guy in the audience and it turned out he's one of the, you know, world leaders in Java programming. I really, this is a great guy. And we are still in touch. And what I have learned from him, that's impressive and awesome and just invaluable. And five, for my own business, I have hired people I met after my talks. I gave talks, I met people, they asked me a couple of questions and that's it. Now, Speaking is good and rewarding. Might only do only a few of you speak. Who speaks? Yeah, that's not even few, that's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let us speak about the reasons why to not speak. What are the biggest fears? I asked, a couple of people, and I uh, asked um, a person, you know, he is very competent, he's a Java enterprise developer. I said, hey, why are you not speaking? And he told me, I have nothing to tell. I thought, hey, come on, man. I thought I did not hear well. You're 10 years in business, you code every day, you have a tons of project, and you have nothing to tell? Listen, if you have nothing to tell, after, let's say, one year or two years of programming, you're doing something wrong. It's not possible. Here is the problem. Most people think it's easy. It's not worth to speak about it because it's easy for you. But it's not necessarily easy for other people. For a web developer, CSS is a no-brainer. But for a back-end developer, it's not. Here is the solution for you in three steps. First, you need to find a topic. What did you do yesterday or last week? If you can't remember that, write a diary. I do that. I have a list of potential blog posts. I write a weekly mail, uh, newsletter. 
I write on Twitter. When I need a topic, I just look at what I wrote and on my potential blog uh, post list, and then I have a topic. Second, you need to find the right audience. If you recently learned CSS, then CSS ex experts are most likely not your right audience. Instead, maybe address um, uh, Java people. Java people are only rarely known for the web competence. And third, you need to find out what your audience needs. Java people usually want to have a nice looking blog, but they have not the competence with CSS, you know. So what about WordPress CSS hacks? WordPress CSS hacks, what about that? As soon as you know for whom you speak and why, you can make almost any of your skills a valuable topic. Which in fact means, as soon as you have learned one single thing, you can speak already. Now the second thing I hear often is, I have horrible stage fright. Yeah, that's okay. You know, I have stage fright too. I have notes here because I have stage fright. That's not a problem, it's perfectly normal. US comedian Jerry Seinfeld said, hey, you will never feel comfortable on stage. And John Lennon, he puked before entering the stage. It's a biochemical thing. It's about adrenaline. We're in front of tens and hundreds of people when we are on stage, and everybody watches you, uh, how you move and how you speak. What do these people think? <laughs> on stage, it feels like we have given up all our defense. We can't hide. How would you feel in a cage full of tigers without any defense? I guess pretty similar. At least it feels so for me. You know what I do before I enter a stage even today? My trick is I make myself clear that I will be dead in 50 years. Whatever I do wrong today does not matter because in 50 years it's all over. And even earlier when the plane crashes, it's okay because I allow myself to fail because it's not that important. And you should allow yourself to fail too because you always get a second or third chance. And next year, nobody watches this YouTube video, uh, I hope at least. Yeah, is that, is that a little bit macabre or fatalistic? It's not. It's just my way to not longer wet my pants when I speak. It can happen. You know, some studies say you're less nervous when you practice. I practice. The best speakers I know practice even more. Steve Jobs practiced weeks in advance. For this talk, I have worked hours and hours on the script. I gave the script to my editor. I recorded the script. I listened to the record when I was out for long distance running. I still need my notes. But maybe you didn't like my talk. But when I arrived in Zagreb, I felt well prepared. When I moved here on stage, I said, okay, I need my notes, but I felt prepared. I could tell you something. Now, we're coming to an end of the talk, to the end of this talk, and here's one last thing I would like to recommend to you. We haven't talked about slides and presentation, or presentation styles and body language and all of that. If you research for your own talk, don't let these things confuse you. We, we are all code warriors. We don't need to become experts in speaking. Ignore people who try to tell you that you need a thousand of classes or to read uh, tens and thousands of books just to speak. Ignore them. It's not true. You don't need that. Now, what I think is you just need to change your imagination. Let's do an experiment. Think a few seconds about yourself and describe yourself. Please stop thinking. It's too early, maybe you need more coffee, but I haven't seen a lot of people thinking. But anyway, if you have thought a couple of seconds, then you might have recognized that you were thinking about yourself in this third-person perspective. 
This is a psychology concept which is called the looking glass self. The only anchor ha you have to describe yourself is how you think uh, others look at you. Your whole identity is the result of how you think others look at you. Now imagine you would be on stage and give a talk. You would imagine how the, the audience would look at you. You maybe would imagine the worst thing which could happen. An example, wetting the pants or something. But this is almost never the reality. This is not going to happen. You need to change your imagination because nobody will throw rotten tomatoes or eggs on you. We're all adults. Here's the truth. Developers, they don't need any supermodel on stage. They don't need comedians on stage. Developers usually just want to learn. Change your imagination because, yeah, because. Stop pretending everybody could laugh at you. It's just a bad excuse. Prepare. Find out what you want to say. Go on stage and be yourself, and nothing can go wrong. Now, if you still want to read something, I recommend you the presentation sign book from Gar Reynolds. It shows you how to do uh, slides, you know? Things like that. So, now, do you have any questions for me? Oh my god, it must be very boring for you. Mm -hmm. So no, no awkward questions or something? We have, we have a couple of microphones, please. Raise your hand. Mm. OK, instead, because I have two minutes left. Is there, yeah, OK, thank you. I'm, uh, I owe you a beer or something. Um, I just want to know how is your first talk ever? How did it look like? Did you puke? Sorry, I didn't understand the question. <laughs> your first talk. Yes. How did it look like? My first talk, uh, let me think what it was. It was actually pretty horrible because I thought everybody would laugh at me, you know. And, uh, yeah. I didn't even uh, realize that I would die in 50 years because it felt as I would have died already. So I think it's, it's just the first step you need to take. And when you did the first step, uh, then, you know, uh, everything becomes easier. You need, just need to accept that uh, there is adrenaline, that you are afraid before the stage. I mean, I'm even afraid here. I'm afraid that somebody would ask me a question which I could not answer, or maybe, you know, um, has a, that kind of English I can't understand. So that, that would be awkward as well. But in fact, it's, it's not problematic. You just need to do the first step. And if you're really afraid before things, um, yeah, breathe. Breathe five minutes or something. It usually helps. Either you puke, puke, or it helps. So. We have another question. Yeah. Hey. <clears throat> so I wanted to ask about like uh, giving talks like this one, really short and on point, <coughs> versus giving talks on user groups and workshops and stuff like this. What do you think are like the differences? And maybe you think that people who are going to talk on conferences first, better off with user groups, you know, just what are your thoughts about it? Mm. But I think, um, I think uh, developers and conference talks are often done wrong because, uh, you know, uh, we're doing it for the wrong reasons. Sometimes, you know, um, we have a long talk and think, okay, I have a topic, it's actually, you know, it's, it's short, but I have 40 minutes, I need to fill it up, and we start to fill up uh, things and, and speak and speak and speak, and it's usually not, not interesting. So there are some books which could be chapters, and it's the same for talks. Um, you can't say a long talk or a short talk is better. The thing is, um, you need to transport value. So I am here because I want to give you something, and only if, if I am able to give you something, it's, it's good. And if my talk would have been 10 minutes and you would have learned one single thing, you would say it was a good talk. But if my talk would have been 40 minutes and you would have learned, you know, um, nothing, then it was just a crappy, boring talk. So you simply can't say it. Instead, focus on the value of your talk. Um, yeah, well, that's it, basically.